Support WrestleTalk! Share this video on social media. Thank you for your awesome support on Patreon and disrespectfully classy Marky Blasi. Hello and welcome to the WrestleTalk Mecha News! Hi. I'm Luke Owen. Give that little thumbs up button a little old click and make sure you subscribe to WrestleTalk as we've just launched the WrestleTalk Showcase, a new show we're doing here on the channel where we highlight the best indie wrestling from around the world. Support WrestleTalk, support indie wrestling, and leave a comment down below to answer our question of the day. What was your favorite show from this past packed weekend of wrestling? Coming up on today's news, we've got backstage notes from AEW's All Out, a potential huge announcement from WWE and which wrestlers from both WWE and AEW have requested their release. Click the timestamps down below to jump to any of those new stories, but first, let's kick things off by giving a shout out to the awesome SWAF Nation members who came to hang out with us here at WrestleTalk before New Japan's incredible Royal Quest show in London. It was so cool to be able to meet and chat with all of you about a variety of different topics and have a few drinks before watching Minoru Suzuki forearm Kazuchika Okada in the face so hard it ruptured everyone's eardrums. A particular shout out goes out to Samad Ali, who not only made us this very lovely card, but also bought us this empty box. And the results of Royal Quest have played into the announced matches for New Japan's Three Night Destruction series, with new British heavyweight champion Hiroshi Tanahashi defending against Zack Sabre Jr. in a rematch on night one, while Jay White will challenge for Tetsuya Naito's IWGP Intercontinental Championship in Kobe. And Will Ospreay and Robbie Eagle's team Birds of Prey will get a title shot against Taiji Ishimori and El Phantasmo after beating the junior heavyweight tag team champions at Royal Quest. The Kagoshima Show will see new Neverwhere Open champion Kenta take on Kota Ibushi and his right to challenge contract. Kenta won the Never Openweight Championship from Tomohiro Ishii at Royal Quest due to interference from the Gorillas of Destiny, who retained their IWGP tag titles against Aussie Open earlier in the night. However, the big news from the show was that Kenta seemed to pick up an injury during his match with Ishii, seemingly losing himself during some spots, including a very late kickout towards the end of the bout. While nothing official has been said by New Japan in terms of what the injury was, Kenta himself took to Twitter to announce that he was taken to hospital following the match and is fine, joking about the London crowd booing him out of the building. Just a few hours later, AEW held All Out in Chicago, an event Tony Khan announced would now be an annual show. The superb event saw Jimmy Havoc, Darby Allen, and Joey Janela have the terrific Cracker Barrel Clash! Cody get revenge on Sean Spears with the aid of an Arn Anderson spinebuster, and the Lucha Brothers Brothers retained their AAA Tag Team Championships against the Young Bucks in the craziest ladder match I've ever seen. I mean, he hit a Canadian Destroyer from the top of a ladder through a table. The main event of the show saw Chris Jericho become the inaugural AEW World Champion by beating Hangman Page with a still rubbish looking Judas Elbow. And while many felt there could be a rematch soon, it wasn't Jericho who interrupted Page's post-match media scrum, and instead the returning pack, who announced that contrary to some reports, he is staying with All Elite Wrestling. Yeah, I guess so. oi, oi, oi. Commiserations, Hangman Page. I'll be honest with you, Adam. It broke my little heart to see you lose tonight. But unfortunately for yourself, me and you, well, we have some unfinished business. So let me tell everyone the real reason I returned to A E W. Revenge. Hey, 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 hey. You gotta get out of here. Get your stuff And it's not just Pac who will be doing more date with AEW. Following the insane ladder match between the Young Bucks and the Lucha Brothers, both teams were attacked by two wrestlers wearing masks of former American presidents, revealing themselves to be former Impact Tag Team Champions Santana and Ortiz, better known as the second iteration of the Latin American Exchange. It had been reported by Dave Meltzer following Impact Slammiversary show that LAX would be heading to AEW once they'd finished up with Impact. And the two are speculated to be the mystery tag partners of Chris Jericho when he takes on the Elite 
on AEW's first TV show on October 2nd. And perhaps to the surprise of absolutely no one, Mike Johnson has reported on PW Insider that Santana and Ortiz will need a new name as they won't be able to use the name LAX in AEW, which they've been known as for several years now, as that is owned by Impact Wrestling. Another surprise debut came during the Casino Battle Royale, which kicked off the buy-in pre-show and featured Tennille Dashwood. Dashwood, the former Emma in WWE, has previously wrestled for ROH's fledgling Women of Honor division and was recently announced to have signed with Impact Wrestling. Interestingly, Mike Johnson is also reporting on PW Insider that AEW would like to use Dashwood more for upcoming dates, but notes there's nothing confirmed going forward. While Dashwood working more days with AEW certainly could be possible, PW Insider did report following Double or Nothing that Impact Champion Brian Cage was set to make an appearance in that show's Casino Battle Royale, but was told just before the show by Impact that he wasn't allowed due to stipulations in his contract. However, according to Britt Baker, Dashwood isn't officially under contract with Impact Wrestling. She told the media scrum after the show, I know she's working with Impact, but she's not officially contracted. WrestleZone reported recently that Dashwood was with Impact until Bound for Glory in October, which has since been backed up by Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful, who says that Dashwood is only working with Impact on a nightly deal. Someone who will be doing more dates for All Elite Wrestling is referee Aubrey Edwards, who officiated the main event match between Paige and Jericho for the AEW Championship. Later report noted that Edwards was the first female to referee a pay-per-view world championship main event. Sorry Lacey Evans, you don't count apparently. And Edwards herself announced on Twitter the day after All Out that she was now officially signed with All Elite Wrestling full time. She posted today, I'm officially a full time referee for AEW. This was a long time coming, but I needed to close the doors on my previous job before saying anything. Now I yell at people to pay my bills. I can't thank AEW enough for the opportunities they've already given me. I've never been happier. Matt, Nick, Cody, Brandy, Kenny, Tony, everyone, they are all the most wonderful people. See you in DC on October 2nd on AEW on TNT. The same cannot be said, however, for Kylie Ray. Along with Britt Baker and Nyla Rose, Kylie Ray was the first of AEW's women's division to be announced, and she wrestled on the Double or Nothing card in a four-way match that also featured the surprise debut of Awesome Kong. However, nothing has been heard from her since, with Ray even deleting her social media account shortly after Double or Nothing. And during the post All Out Media scrum, Sean Ross Sapper Fightful asked Tony Khan what her status was, with Khan revealing that Kylie Ray asked for her release from the company, which was granted. Sap then later posted a clip of the interview where Khan says Ray parting ways with All Elite Wrestling was amicable. She's no longer with us. Uh, we had so many things going into, so many announcements going into that role, but uh, she asked for a release and we granted it. So uh, it was, it was, she, she called me and asked if uh, she could be released from her contract. And it was pretty simple. I said, yeah, and I asked her if everything was okay. And she said, yeah, she, you know, she just didn't want to be with the company anymore. And we talked about it and it was very simple. And so yeah, she's, she's uh, not on her own. Seem amicable. Super and, amicable. Okay. I, I, she's a very nice person. And Kylie Ray wasn't the only wrestler who asked for their release over the weekend. Casey Michaels of Squared Circle Sirens is reporting that Casey Catanzaro has requested her release from WWE, saying that a back injury she suffered has made her decide to quit wrestling completely. WWE were quite clearly high on Catanzaro, who was the first woman to qualify for the finals of American Ninja Warrior, which still sounds like the title of a Chuck Norris canon movie from the 1980s. She was part of the second Mae Young Classic, appeared several times on NXT television, and even competed in the 2019 Royal Rumble, where she was given the Kofi Kingston highlight spot. Her last match was on July 19th, where she teamed with Lacey Lane to defeat Marina Shafir and Tainara Conti, and her last TV appearance was in a losing effort to Io Shirai in July. At the time of this recording, WWE have not confirmed if Kadanzaro's request has been accepted, which could mean that Kadanzaro won't be around for a reported big announcement coming from WWE. Brian Alvarez reported via Wrestling Observer Live that something big is coming from WWE, but didn't give any details 
details on what the announcement would be or what it's connected to. But he did say it would be on a similar level of big to NXT going to the USA Network. Alvarez says that WWE were expecting the story to break over the weekend as something happened in the company and were surprised that it didn't. According to Alvarez, we can expect to hear the news drop this week. And maybe that big news could tie into a Dave Meltzer report that WWE are currently planning a major NXT show for October 2nd to counter All Elite Wrestling's debut on TNT. This of course was to be expected. When TNA announced they were going to air an episode of Impact on Spike against Raw in 2010, WWE quickly hashed out a deal to bring back Bret Hart into the company so he could have his first in-ring face-to-face meeting with Shawn Michaels since the Montreal Screwjob in 1997. Meltzer doesn't say what the show could feature, just that it will be a major NXT show. It had been previously reported that Vince McMahon had talked about the idea of using more main roster wrestlers on NXT in order to bring in viewers. And there is some speculation that this show could be loaded with main roster names to make it unmissable going up against AEW. Thank you to everyone who joined us for the premiere of WrestleTalk Showcase, which aired just after our All Out Wrestle Ramble review. The show is designed to highlight the amazing independent wrestling from around the world. And the first episode featured highlights of Rampage Brown versus Joe Doring in WrestleGate Pro's Grand Prix to crown their first champion. Will Ospreay versus Robbie X from NGW and a full match between Addicted to Adrenaline taking on the OJMO and WrestleTalk Scholarship winner Callum Newman. Click the video on screen to check out WrestleTalk Showcase if you didn't get to see it earlier. And if you did see it earlier, why not watch it again? And what have the reactions been to the new Joker movie? Click the Screen Stalker video to watch Ollie Davis and Pete Quinnell dive into all of that. I've been Luke Owen and that was Mecha Wrestling.